Uh, welcome back to Christian Heritage Chapel. We are here to um, take a few time twice a month on our Sunday services. Sunday, Sunday, we are going to uh, introduce some teaching and counseling concerning the family, the home, and uh, we're going to take the opportunity to look at the scriptures concerning uh, how the home, the family, should be geared through the scriptures, through the power of God working in the life of the individual. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for the blessedness of the word of God. And we pray, Father, for our, our homes. We pray for the family. We pray for all the individuals that make up the home and make up the family, whether they be uh, many or few or one or two, we pray that you as creator will move within the lives of individuals that both children and parent, mom and dad, husband and wife, nephew and niece, aunt and uncle, grandchildren, grandparents may pull together be unified under the power of God, and be blessed. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, sometimes we may, uh, you may feel that as we does this uh, series every other Sunday, uh, you may think that it's biblical counseling. If you want to stretch it that way, it's okay. But the scripture does speak of the, the Bible. The scriptures does speak of child rearing. It does speak of marriage. It does speak of relationships. And we want to uh, briefly uh, 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 talk about these things. Now, for some reason that I might go off into a counseling or psychology uh, counseling methods, uh, it's only to enhance and strengthen your knowledge in being a parent, a child, or being an adult, as being an adolescent, a teenager, a preteen, a mom, a dad, a grandparent, a grandparent, a uncle, a aunt, a niece, or nephews. All of that is within the uh, unit of the home, of the family. Now, shortly after creation, shortly after creation, we know that God gave Adam, made Adam and Eve, correct? And he told them to be fruitful and to increase in numbers. And they had no problem doing that. I mean, it really increased. The problem exists is that Adam and Eve, they fell, they sinned, and they disobeyed God. As they were increasing and growing, many individuals left the presence of God, left uh, obeying God. It started with Adam's oldest son, which was Cain. Now, the scriptures does speak of child rearing, the home and family living. So when a person says there, the, there's no textbook, a spiritual textbook, like you have counseling, psychology, and different textbooks, you know. The Bible does speak of it, both Old and New Testament, and that's what we're going to look whole up as our textbook, the Word of God. In the Old Testament times, a large family was considered a source of special blessing from God. In the Old Testament, of course, when, uh, when, when, when a mom... A woman did not have uh, children. She was looked upon as being cursed or, or frowned upon. This is the Old Testament time. But children, according to Psalms 139, it says, Blessed is he whose quiver is full of them. Biblical teaching on children and parental guidance can be divided into two categories, namely about children and parents and parenting. Here you have the two categories. We have children and we have parents parenting. Okay? 
That's one subject we're going to talk about. Then it's the subject about marriage, all of which involves marriage, separation, divorce, and moving on. We're going to look at the, the problems, the problematic problems of child rearing, some problems that may develop in parental guidance we're going to look at. We're going to look at family problems that's going to rise up. And we may even give some case study uh, to follow after to let you know what we're talking about before we get into the scriptures. But we're basically going to stick with the scriptures as we analyze through scriptures and through real life how to bring up our children, how to be parents, the problems as a family that might develop or are developing. Right. So children, let's look at children. In the Bible, children are seen as gifts from God. Gifts from God, God that can bring forth uh, these children, they bring forth also uh, joy or sorrow. The scripture teaches, as well as in psychology, as well as in any uh, course that you may take concerning parenting, children are, uh, young people or, ch or children are to be loved, honored, and respected as persons. They are important in the God's kingdom because Jesus himself received children. And he says, blessed children. He blessed the children. So if we turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, let's turn there in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Let's briefly look at that. In Ephesians chapter 6, it starts, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Now, the phrase in the Lord does not mean that it speaks of only to children that are Christian. The phrase itself in the Lord means that this is the will of God for you as children to obey your parents. It's not, it does not say saved children. It does not say church children, religious children. Ch children in general, all over the earth, created by God, the command from God is, that you are to obey your parents. A parent is one who brought you into the world by means of mom and dad, male and female, coming together to bring forth children. Children, obey your parents. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. Here, Paul is stemming from the Ten Commandments. That one, the ten, one, within the Ten Commandments, it says, Children, honor, you obey, honor your father and mother. Now, in order for you to uh, yet understand what I'm saying, I'm going back to the book of Exodus, chapter 20, because that's where it's at, Exodus, chapter 20. And let's, let's look at it together. This is the means by which children, when they search the scriptures, when they read the scriptures, or the scriptures is read to them, they see this. It's in Exodus, right, chapter 20. It says in verse 12, Honor thy father and mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God gives you. Your days will be full of blessedness, happy times, because happy times, you can't have happy times without sorrow and grief. Because of who we are as individuals, as born in sin and shaped in iniquity, Psalms 51. All children are, all humans go that route. Every child is a sinner. Born in sin and shaped in iniquity, Psalms 51. But it says here, as a child, now, you are to honor, respect, 
give due diligence as children to respect and honor your father and your mother. Now, in your home, sad to say, there are um, abusiveness, whether it's physically or other means of, of abusiveness. It is plaguing many homes, as well as in the days of the Old Testament, the days in Paul's day, Jesus' day, even ours today. But God is calling upon the child to honor, to respect their father, to respect their mother. If it's only the father in the home, you honor the father. If your mother is in the home, you honor the mother. Whether they're in the home or out of the home, children, honor your father and mother. Verse 1 of Ephesians 6, children, obey your parents. So respect to obey is to honor. When you speak out aggressively, evilly, meaningful, despite words, whether words or actions, you're not honoring your parent. Whether it's the frowning, whether it's under the voice saying, whether it's lip saying, whether it's even in thought, which God knows, you're not honoring your parent. See, the word, when we see the word that says, children, obey your parents, it, they are aware that it only means one thing. What I say, I want you to do. That's part of it. But in a realistic manner, way, okay. A parent should never tell a child to do something wrong, to say something wrong, to act wrong, to carry out something wrong. But nevertheless, the scripture says, children, obey your parents. And when the parent abused their children in various forms and tells them to cheat, to lie, to steal, and do things contrary to God's will, God's word, the parent will be held responsible for that. Your part as children is to obey your parents in the Lord. Well, this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. That's in the book of Exodus I just read. Elsewhere in the scriptures, Paul strongly criticizes disobedience in the life of children. The parents are, see, there's, there's a twofold here. The, the child does their part, the parent or parents does their part. Then he moves on when he says, in the same, if you move on down to verse uh, 4, and it says, fathers, do not expirate your children. Treat them ill, abuse them. See, when you expirate a, uh, a, a child as a father, you're abusing, whether it's verbally, whether it's mentally, or physically. It says, fathers, do not expirate your children. Instead, bring them up in training. You train children as a father because that's the responsibility of the father in the home. If the father is not there, the mom. That's understandable. Whether it's the mom, the grandparent, grandparents, whether it's the uncle, the aunt, your foster parent, okay, your adopted parent, you are to train the children. Many in our modern cultures, modern society all over the world are not taking the time to train their children. They, 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 they feel that the training needs to be done in the school system, in, in, in 
Sunday school, by a coach, by a club, by a gathering, by a group. God is holding the parent, namely the father, if he's in the home, to train the children. It says here, it says, train, train, it says, bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. Now, the scripture, which is the textbook that we are following, we go back to the book of Proverbs. Let's, let's, let's go back to the book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs, it lets us know to train up a child in the way that they should go. This is what the scripture teaches us. And what the parent's responsibility is to what? Train up the child. So when fathers, see when you get to chapter, what, 22, 23 uh, of Proverbs, you, you're going you to see these uh, commands. So we see, train up the child in the way that they should go. Now let's go back to the, the that's the father's, the parent's responsibility. The scriptures also says, whosoever curse his father. Cursing your father is, 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 is also involved in treating your mother and your father. That's Proverbs chapter what, 20, verse uh, uh, 20. 20. It says, Whoso curse his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscured darkness. Proverbs 20, 20. To curse your parent is to show disrespect for them. It's not to honor them. It's not so much as what we on, in the Western Hemisphere in the world to, today, we, we think of cursing as cussing them out. That is true. That's part of it. But when you ill-treat your parent, abuse them, because they are your parent. And abusing can come in various ways. You know. And when you uh, sassy them, and you know what I mean by sassy them, by, with words or body movements, you're cursing your parent. You're showing double dishonor, double disrespect, and it's wrong in the sight of God. The scripture says that you are to train up your child that is in the way. Now, foolishness is found, the scripture says, foolishness is found in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction will drive it out. Now, I know in many movements, in many uh, circles of religion, they take the word rod very literally. They use the word rod as a stick, the belt, the switch, whatever means. Now, to a non-compliant child, that is not going to work. Maybe to a compliant child. What is a compliant child or a non-compliant? A compliant child is a child in a home who honors the parent highly and does what the parent tells them to do. They don't give any words. They normally just carry out what needs to be done that the parent tells them. They please their parent all the time. A non-compliant child is troublesome and uh, may say one thing and don't do it. May say they're going to empty trash but don't do it. Uh, um, give sassy words, um, hard-headed. They, they can be kind. They can be honest and gentle, but they're just don't want to follow instructions. Not following instruction is to be disobedient. 
not in its fullest extent, but you still disobey your parent. But the rod can be many means within the tool within the in, in the life of the parent. The rod doesn't necessarily has to be punishment, punitive punishment, in the sense of chastening, in the sense of rod beating, belts, switches, and etc. Many have alluded to that, even some famous counselors and psychiatrists, but I, I, I but it's, doesn't, the scripture doesn't lean towards that way. The scriptures doesn't. Man does. And it can be taken out of context and can be lured to that, but it's not. Now, what the scripture says, the rod of correction, the scripture goes on and says, if you beat them with the rod, See, the word in the King James is when you beat them with the rod, you know, don't worry about their yelling and, and everything. See, that allures to whipping. That allures to using a force to educate your child as you feel is educated. This is not what the scriptures is talking about. When it says... Father says, it says, bring them up in training. The scripture says, train up a child in the way that they should go. What Solomon is actually speaking of is he alluding to the birth of the child. When the child comes out of, uh, out of the womb, the midwife is there to receive the child. The midwife takes the child, snaps the, or cuts the um, umbilical cord, that severs the child from the mother and wipes the child off, cleans the child up. The midwife then will use her fingers and, and, and dip it into some a jar of or, or a cup of sauce or flavored fruits and put it in the child's mouth that caused a sucking sensation on the tip of the finger. This was done in the old days as far as what Solomon is talking about. As the midwife is doing this, she's moving back towards the parent that's still either on the floor, in the, in the bed, in wherever, in the chair, whatever, and wherever they had just been having the child, and moves the child back to the, uh, the mom and places the child towards the breast of the uh, of the mom while the other hand is massaging the breast the midwife is doing this uh, with the juice or the fruits on the breast of the of the parent the mom and she leans the child over towards the breast and takes her finger out and the child immediately is pushed towards the breast and that begins the sensation sucking of breastfeeding. And this is what the child wants every day. That breastfeeding. That particularly breastfeeding. Feeding. Training the child up in a way that they should go. So this is what was done in the early days of the ancient times even doing sometimes even in the 20s, the 80s, the 30s, and whatever as far as what our knowledge can carry us from. So what is that saying? That's a form of training the child to receive instructions, sucking sensation from the breast. The father is to do the same thing in training up their child. He trains up the child in the way of the Lord. And not only in the way of the Lord. See, the way of the Lord is is is, is, is a diligent tra tra uh, training in sociology and social right, education, right, structure, body structure, 
as Jesus, the scripture says in Luke chapter 4, that Jesus grew up in wisdom and stature and just intelligence, and it goes on. Luke, in the last part of the Gospel of Luke. Now, uh, in the early part of the Gospel of Luke, okay, in doing it, the writings of Jesus as a, as a child. So the father is to uh, bring up the child and train them and instruct them in the way of the Lord. The birth child is to be trained. The babies, the toddlers, the children, the preteens, the teenagers, the young people that are in the home is under the responsibility of the parents to teach them the values of the things of God and other related things also in and out of the home. These things need to be, be instructed. So you know that's why the scripture says, do not aspirate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and the, and the instruction, or in some translation, it says the nurturing. Now, next time we come again, we will speak of other avenues of the home and the family because the child is the delicate is the delicate member of the family of the home we have we have then we have as we said the two categories is the children and the parent and parenting so when we come back again we're going to speak of what the bible says about child rearing because you have to understand that even though there's going to be problems that's going to develop in the home as the Old Testament throughout the Old Testament beginning with Cain we're going to see through that if children are not trained up in the Lord and instructed in the things of Life, tragedy will happen, as we're going to see next time in our next in the conflict and the problems that develop in family life because of the parent or parents may not have trained their children up or instruct them, and then there's possibility that they may not know. We're going to deal with these probabilities in our next uh, session. Let's look to the Lord and pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for the privilege of coming before the people of God, before families in general, homes in general, relationships in general, that we can know your will through your word, that you have not forsaken us, even in our sinful condition. As creations, as creations by you, the Creator, your attempt is to gather many into the fall. Though we rebel and don't want to, nevertheless, we thank you for your mercy and your grace that overrides and draws us, those whom you love. We thank you, Father, for the blessedness of the Word of God, and even in the midst of parenting, child rearing, family life, marriage life, singlehood, living a virtuous life, being a single, even when divorce, separation plagues the home, you're still there. You still can help. Blessed is your name, O God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.